All right, I want to get into making a blending tortillon, okay? Now, blending tortillons are so invaluable to drawing, I can't even stress it. They hammer in texture. You can uh, make these really nice shading effects going on, like here's Lucille Ball. See how the shading is on this? Very, very faint, very gradient. I love this look. It's uh, it, This one looks a little worked to me, but other than that, you know, this is just doing a Google search. That's amazing. You know, it just, the tonal range is there. It's got a good shade value in here. And these are things that we can do in Photoshop using the tools. Okay. So now what we're going to have to do is learn to make a blending tertillion. The bad thing is you just can't make one of those without making the next brush. So one brush handles two different things. Hand, handles the blending tortillion, it also places texture within um, a given situation. Okay, so let's go, and this is where I should have made a new uh, background image, but let's go new, 256 by 256 and hit OK. And let's go into a very hard brush, like number 19. Go back to my navigator. All right, so this next one, what I want to do is go to brushes, change this to black and white, and go to uh, it's going to be under color dynamics. The problem is, color dynamics isn't lighting up for me because of something in the system. So, what I want to do is highlight the brush. That way, color dynamics actually pops in. So, color dynamics, number 19. And what I'm going to do is color dynamics, I'm going to do a background foreground shift. And I'm going to do it on pen pressure. This means with black and white, I will always get a variance of gray in there. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger here. And just Go like that, and I'm going to say, no, that's not what I want. There's some things missing. So what I want to do here is make my flow all the way up, my opacity all the way up. Okay, pretty good. I'm still kind of picky about this brush because, you know, it's one of the things I use all the time. So what I'm going to do is put it on a new layer. That way I can lower the opacity value on it. I'm seeing no background foreground shift at all. So I'm going to choose something else like fade. Yeah, good enough. Okay. So you don't see a very much, but there is a variance going on in here. And I'm just tapping a couple times on a Wacom drawing tablet. Okay, so what I want to do here is lower the opacity down to 50% on these. Somewhere maybe even 40%. So they're a very light gray. Okay, this is going to be my brush. What I'm going to do is do a uh, define brush preset and call it my texturizer or texture brush and it's going to look like this. Now again, there you might want to play around with actually making this brush so it works for you. I've had to do this a few times until I get a brush that I'm really happy with. It's a space upon dots. It's how big the dots are, everything. Basically, you're putting resolution back into a picture. Okay, now let's kind of play around with the whole scattering and all that whatnot. Let's go in here. Make sure my angle jitter is all the way up. My size jitter is off. Well, no, let's turn that back on. There we go. So I'm seeing a lot of variance in here.
Okay, I can also choose other dynamics and use my opacity on. I want to do that. Okay, and I want to lower this down so I don't see very many black values. Like, I don't want a black value like that. I want something real, real light. So I might even turn that one all the way up. If I turn the flow jitter on, it does the same thing. So all my real darks are in the center and it branches out to light. Good. If I have just a point, little point variance on the scatter, not much, it'll shift it around a little bit and that's good. All right, so let's try this brush out and see what it does. Basically, what I now can do is go in and make very, very fine, fine shading. Okay, and I'm gonna choose the opacity a little bit down. Nice. Okay, so see what it's doing? It's basically putting in a bunch of little tiny dots, all at different resolutions, all at different opacity values into the situation, okay? Very nice. Okay, now what we could do with this brush is first save it because I like to add this as my texture brush. So I'm gonna go in here and say, And now in the next video, I want to show you how to use this brush to make a blending tortillion.